The other idea that they were trying to figure out, maybe the reasons that it might fit together, is they thought of the puzzle fit idea. Particularly with South America and Africa, they appear to fit pretty well as a puzzle. Now, when we talk about them fitting as, fitting as a puzzle, is that it's not the land that fits, but actually the continental margins. Now, make that a note, the continental margins. That's a little different. That's where they are, the continental shelf. Because actually, the shape of the continent includes this thing called the shelf. So it's the shape of this thing, not the, uh, the land itself. Because the land sort of fits, but the margins fit even better. So they call that the puzzle fit model. And then there's some more fossils. Actually, if you kind of put everything together, there's different critters. Here's a one and a two and a three. They've got names. Actually, this is from your textbook. So if you're watching this after the activity, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's OK. The idea is that this uh, brown uh, fossil is this look, looks like a stumpy hippopotamus. I don't know what it is. Um, you find it in Africa. Here's Madagascar and in India and Antarctica. So if they were all together, they could be in a kind of a pattern right here. We could find this guy here. He's in uh, Africa and South America. Uh, this is probably the one that we just uh, looked at on the previous slide. And then there's this particular plant fossil they find in Australia, Antarctica, Africa, and South America. So you can kind of see, so for whatever reason, this particular plant seemed to grow in this band. So that's kind of the idea, some more fossils. Now, the guy who figured this out, and we kind of watched a clip on this guy a while back, was Alfred Wegener. Well, Alfred Wegener, there he is. Good looking dude, right? And there he is again. The reason he's actually all dressed up like this is because he spent a fair amount of time doing his research in Greenland, which is, of course, cold. Uh, Greenland is not green, it's ice, it's, it's white. And Iceland is actually not icy, but it's green. How's that for weird? Okay, and these are the drawings that he made right here. And he actually, uh, he had, these are the pictures that he had as he was drawing them. And here's another one flying in. So these are the, the ideas that he had. Uh, but basically, he was laughed out of the world, uh, of the scientific world. They said, you're full of it. There's no way, because there's no way to cause this to happen. So they said, no, not going to happen. OK, here's another one of his pictures. And so basically, people discounted Alfred Wegener's ideas for a long, long time. This, he was in the, uh, I want to say the 1800s or late, uh, maybe early 1900s. Actually, you know, with that said, well, here's uh, a little, little, little stamp of him. How's that cool? OK, let's watch a short clip. There's no sound to it, but it's interesting just to see some of his, uh, him, just him in Greenland. They've got just some old, old footage of him, him in Greenland. Well, that was cool. Now let's talk about World War II. Something interesting happened during World War II. In World War II, we had lots of ships, okay? And those ships were looking for these things right here. That is a German U-boat, okay? And so during this time, what happens is the ships were looking for these. And as they were looking for these, they were looking under the water using something called sonar. Sonar is something that uh, you can sort of listen to under the ground. But in doing the sonar, they were able to map the bottom of the ocean floor. And what they found is this. They found the ocean floor to be, well, not flat at all, but filled with mountains. And this was where they discovered, um, of course, the mid-ocean ridge. And this has such a strong pattern going through here, as you can see. Yeah, that color's not so great. We change colors to like a red. I think we need a red. Oh, there we go. That's much better. You can see the mid-ocean ridge. They found all of these features, basically, as these boats. It's a boat traveled across there and sent their sonar down, they were able to determine what does the bottom of the ocean look like. And it looks something like this. So this is a pretty cool picture. And the cool thing is, is they like, wow, that's amazing. 
Well, then all of a sudden they begin to say, if this is true, then there must be something that's causing this to diverge. And that's when they begin to, to, to do some research. And we've already learned there's the um, convection cells in, under the, in, in the plate, upper mantle, that's causing uh, the motion of the plates. And so uh, Wegener's ideas, now we talk about Wegener with uh, great uh, pride and such, but it uh, turns out during his life he wasn't uh, looked at. And then this right here is the modern theory right here. And uh, basically the idea of plate tectonics, and it's much, much more um, uh, mature of a theory than it was uh, back in Wegener's time. And you can see the plates and how they're moving. This is really a good uh, picture of all the different plates. Here we have the Indian plate here colliding with the Eurasian plate. Over here we have the divergent uh, plate boundary. Here we have the Nazca plate colliding with the South American plate making the Andes Mountains, etc. Then we have, of course, down here we have one of those uh, transform faults in California, etc., etc. So that, that's, folks, the modern theory. And I think, you know, we've talked about this enough in class or in podcasts that I think you are probably good. We will see you in class A.